Hello, it's Matt again. I'm an illustrator and a dungeon master, and again, there's no Dungeons and Dragons this week, so I'm going to do another episode of Matt Chats and Splats Digital Art, which is a working title at the moment. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so I had a question in the comments section of my last video, which was about tips for freelancing, from Willow and she wanted to get a bit of portfolio advice. So here comes my sum of knowledge for that. And if anyone wants a bit on any other topics, leave me a comment in this video and I'll see what I can do. So today I'll give some portfolio advice while I draw a picture. And the picture I'm gonna do is an environmental piece because my landscapes and drawing buildings are not a strength. What I normally do is I just model it all up in 3D and photo bash it into something hopefully cool. Um, but today I am going to draw everything from scratch so it could go horribly wrong. I actually know how it turns out already, but you don't. Um, so let's see how that goes. Um, it's going to be a study of this really cool piece, which hopefully I'm posting up right now by a person called Skybolt on DeviantArt and I'm going to put a link to this piece in the description of the video so you can go check out their work which is amazing and I really like the angle and curve of the road on this and so what I'm going to do is sort of commit that composition to memory I'm going to grab about five base colors off this image and I'm away I'm Look, I'm drawing away. Um, I don't want to copy it. I just want to draw inspiration from this composition and color scheme as a base and work from that. And this picture took me about two and a half hours to do. Um, yeah, so let's get into portfolio advice. Um, so yeah, it's a tricky one. There's lots of different opinions and lots of different people out there, art directors and clients that all have their own preferences. So there's no one answer really for this. Um, but I think it comes down to whether you're targeting a particular client, um, be it someone who's doing a board game or a book cover or um, is a big company like Wizards of the Coast and you want to target them specifically uh, for work or a job um, or if you just want your portfolio to bring in clients and be a general net that just lets clients know you're out there and they can approach you for their projects um, so yeah it comes down to those two things I think um, so let's go through if you're targeting a specific client um, what I'd recommend you do is do a bit of research on that client see if you can figure out what their preference is. This might come down to checking out artists that already work for them and see what their portfolios are like, what they concentrate on, what they show off. Say for Woods, Woods of the Coast, you could find Magic the Gathering artists and see how they set up their um, portfolios and what not. Um, yeah, and when targeting these clients, general rule is to put your best stuff at the top of your portfolio, best stuff that relates to that client at the top of your portfolio um, so that when they click your link, that's what they'll see first. Um, some people say just have your 10 best pieces in your portfolio and nothing else, nothing weak or um, not at the top of your game. And this should definitely be the rule if you're emailing your clients um, JPEGs, don't email them hundreds of JPEGs, just 10 of your best that relate to them. But I'm personally a big fan of having a whole heap of work in my portfolio. Um, I reckon this shows a passion for what I do um, and takes the viewer on a bit of a journey. I always like going to art station and seeing top artists and being able to see what they were producing, say, five years ago. To what they're doing now and their progression as an artist. I think it tells a bit of a story. 
definitely get rid of the old stuff that makes you cringe a bit though um but with that old stuff i recommend grabbing it doing a new paint over um and releasing that new paint over saying i've reworked an old image and this is the project progress i've made as a as an artist lots of people like to see that sort of stuff um, i've got some in my portfolio that i'll show you shortly as an example um, okay and in this day and age with ai steamrolling our way i think it's very important to show your pro process too whether it be works in progress or a video kind of like this showing that you can take an image from scratch to a completed finished product without um, photo bashing or using AI just to show your general talent level. Um, I think it's going to be happening pretty soon that a lot of potential clients will want to see your process to make sure they're not um, paying someone to do AI art. Um, yeah, and they want to be able to say this is a pure handcrafted art experience that they're purchasing. Um, so yeah, start showing your your process. It's a um, been a good learning curve for me because I mainly work in concept art at the moment, and concept art is a lot of smoke and mirrors. Uh, we do lots of quick photo bashing and paint overs to generate ideas. So I want to get back to scratch and put out my stuff out there and all it, all its rawness, and uh, just see how it goes um yeah i'd also be very wary if you're targeting a specific client about having not safe for work images in your portfolio unless that's what the client's into it can be an immediate no from many clients and you won't be able to get into a debate with them about them being prudish or that michael angelo's david had no pants on they will just say no and that will be the end of that um, yeah, especially family oriented board games and uh, things like that. Um, now, if you want a portfolio that can bring you in a range of potential clients, then I would just fill your portfolio with the kind of work that you want to do. Okay, so let's go through my portfolio, something I have prepared earlier. This is me here on ArtStation. And yeah, I know art stations and everyone's bad books at the moment for their AI principles, but hopefully they'll sort that out. Um, right, so even my banner along the top shows a, a quick range and a um, concentration on character design. Uh, yeah, and if we go through, I think it's quite a good idea if you do work for specific clients to show that in the thumbnails. That way someone reading your work thinks, ah, this guy's a professional and has done it before and ooh, look who he's worked for. Um, Icarus is the game that I'm a concept art for. Check it out if you haven't played it, sci-fi survival game. It's doing pretty well at the moment. Um, yeah, you can see I'm heavily on the character art side. But also, I do have um, stuff showing a story. I quite like trying to come up with an image that tells a story, um, say, stuff like this for Icarus. What happened to this guy? How did he get caught in ice and frozen over and birds pecked off the skin of his skull? And what's this guy doing out here? Stories. Um, Another good way to start to bring people to your portfolio is to do fan art. I did some critical role fan art here, Grog and Scanlan wandering along. Some people thought it was the guy from God of War. So I got God of War fans as well. That's pretty smart on my behalf. Um, and yeah, posted in the critical role forums and competitions and got featured in their... Um, in the uh, podcast and stuff so that's that's another good idea things that you're fans of go and find um i'll zoom down you can see how many images i've got in here it's uh oh yeah little oh no ai hey um 
going through a few different styles. I'd like to show that I can do different styles. Cartoony here. Um, this is another one that's did pretty well for me. Lots of people share it. It appears on a lot of um, people who make their own music in their fantasy music videos. Um, I think it tells a bit of a story. Um, it always does, does well in Father's Day, this guy. So, yeah. Think of uh, if there's ways you can tell a story that gets your audience engaged. Um, yeah. This one isn't a great picture, but it tells a bit of a story. I did it off a study of um, Vladimir Volgov, and his picture was quite different, and I put this twist on it to uh, say, hey, I don't want your flowers. You get away. Okay, so still sh I'm looking for... Hang on. There's a lady with a bow and arrow around here somewhere, and she was a redo I did of an old piece. There she is. So I actually did this lady six years ago, so I should really do another repaint to see if I can improve it. Um, but this one, done nine years ago, was my original piece. This was when I was doing $40 card art. Um, and yeah, I was pretty proud of this picture when I first did it, but after three years, I looked back and was like, oh, there's a lot going wrong there. Um, it's a bit rough. So I did a redo. Um, quite like this one, but I think I can improve it now. Um, it's quite funny. Some people say, oh, I think both are good in their own ways, but I look at this one and no. So yeah, old piece with a redo shows that you're always a student of this this art craft and that you're always looking to improve I think that shows um, I think that's very interesting to people so that's my portfolio there we shall jump back to my face bam um, yeah so and another good reason to have all those images is that I often get potential clients that ask if they can just purchase an old image that I've got on my portfolio that they want to use in their, um, say, book, or Dungeons and Dragons book, and they just want com the rights to commercial use for it. They don't want exclusive rights. Don't give away exclusive rights. Um, and, yeah, make a little bit of money on the side, or you can just let them use it if you want to help a potential long-term client out, get his Kickstarter launched or whatnot. Um, and then once you've got this big net filled, this portfolio, you want to bring clients to your portfolio. And I usually do that, that by sharing my work through a variety of forums and try to think where would people go if they wanted to find an artist. So, you know, go in the forums of Board Game Geek or any Kickstarter advice forums, uh, things like that, and always have a link to your portfolio. And you bring there. But what you really want to do is have other people um, share your work all over the place because your work's really good. Um, I know on my portfolio, I've got people that watch it who grab my new work and post it into the Reddit forums under imaginary fill in the space. So, like imaginary warriors or imaginary orcs or imaginary dragons. There's another one called Birds for Scale, which I think is quite funny. They always just put in pictures of people who have put in birds to show how big something is in the background, which is a pretty cheesy technique, but it's something us concept artists always do. Um, yeah, and that's generally my portfolio advice. One other quick rule I always follow is I always check with my client before I post anything I've done with them into my portfolio just to say is it all right if I put it in my portfolio and they're always okay with this but they might ask you to wait until their work's revealed first um, say if they're publishing a book with your book cover or they're publishing a board game with your art in it they might say let's wait till it's published um, 
which totally makes sense. And when it is and when it's okay to show their work in your portfolio, make sure you really go out of your way to promote their project as well. Shout it from the rooftops, share all your work with links to your portfolio, but also to the project that they've just released because you want your client to succeed so that you carry on working with them. Okay, that was me chatting and splatting. As you can see, my picture should be coming to an end now. It was not as good as Skybolts, but it took me two and a half hours. So that's pretty good um, and wasn't a total disaster. Thank you for watching. And as I say, if you want to see any other videos of my experiences as a freelancer, let me know in the comments and I'll try to address your questions as well as I can. Thank you for hanging out. Bye. Okay, running a quick test to see if this is good. Also to see if I can see this mouse up in my nose. Cool.